live from WLNS TV. This is Six News at Six. Obviously, there's been calls for you to sit down. Why won't you? Do you, do you want to see this through? What, what's the reason? I don't know why they made those calls, but I'm here until there's a new president. That was what I was hired to do. That's what I will do. Tonight, we begin our special series on Spartan Scandals one-on-one -on -one with John Engler. All this week, you'll hear him answer tough questions on his controversial role leading Michigan State University as interim president. Alexander Illich has our first report. It's January in East Lansing. There's snow on the ground and it's cold outside. The silence of winter had recently been broken. Those treatments were pathetically veiled sexual abuse. By the voices of more than 200 women sexually assaulted by former MSU doctor Larry Nasser. Mr. Nasser, I feel worthless because of what you did to me. Their emotional stories were once so powerful they prompted resignations. Michigan State University President Luana K. Simon has resigned. But seemed to fade into the background when it came time for MSU to appoint a new leader. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I have confidence that John uh, Engler will <coughs> uh, reflect our desire to keep a focus on uh, survivors. Engler agreed to come on board to help steer the university's ship out of a major crisis. I stand here with a level of resolve to commit all my energy toward finding solutions. Uh, you're, you're, you're all set, sir. Uh, You've had the, uh, four. Four. Yeah. sir. And even when faced with angry protesters, students, and staff, the former governor began laying out his plans for MSU's future. Be assured that I will move forward as if my own daughters were on this campus and will treat every survivor and every student as I would my own daughter. But pretty soon he would find himself making headlines, not for the changes he promised to make, but for the way he interacted with some of the Nasser survivors. Mr. Engler then looked directly at me and asked, right now if I wrote you a check for $250,000, would you take it? When you took this position, you made a point to say, I have three daughters. I do have three daughters. Do you think that they would be proud of the way, or, or what do you think they would say about the way that, that things have kind of gone on here, kind of the back and forth between you and the, some of the survivors and the settlements in general? Well, I think uh, they, they've said they're proud of me, and uh, they don't follow things on a day-to-day -day basis. They're like most people. Uh, you know, they see some of the every two months when we have a board meeting, and it's uh, free expression time where people come in, use their First Amendment rights to tell me what they think. Step down! Ellie, it sounds like you covered a lot of ground when you spoke with John Engler last week. We did in just, it was a 10 minute interview, mm -hmm. um, but we did cover a lot of ground. Of course, that was only some of it. Right. Uh, we pressed him on some of the issues, including some of his political connections uh, at the university. So that's something that you'll definitely see this week. Our week-long series after exclusive face-to-face -face interviews with MSU interim president John Engler continues. Tonight, we'll take a look at why Engler was chosen for the job when university faculty wanted the job to go to an academic. Our Capital correspondent Tim Skubik asked Angler what he brings to the table in the post Larry Nassar environment. The MSU faculty said it did not want a career politician for an interim president, but the university did not have an academic crisis, it had something more serious. And so the MSU Board of Trustees went to somebody with more political than academic credentials. The assignment, according to John Engler. How do we help Michigan State University move through this crisis? And whether that's donor support, legislative support, student enrollment, settling litigation, uh, handling investigations. We talked about the investigations, which were frankly the more urgent issue with the Michigan legislature. The House Republican Speaker raised the possibility that lawmakers might withhold state support if MSU did not do the right thing post Larry Nasser. Mr. Engler did not consider that a real threat last February, but there were investigations that were serious. I think what they needed was somebody that'd be a leader who could come in and begin to work with uh, the board and the staff here to deal with the many investigations that are underway. But instead of calming the water, some say Mr. Engler's style continued to fan the fires for his resignation, but he never budged. His mission? start to do stuff that he thought was more important. For example, he reorganized the hierarchy in the med school to make it more transparent to avoid any future Larry Nassers from slipping through the accountability cracks. 
He then tried to fire the former dean of the med school. Eventually, Dr. William Strample resigned with a buyout, but he's still facing criminal sexual misconduct charges. Mr. Engler also announced the construction of a new music building on campus while huddling with the MSU board on other pressing issues. We moved on to set a two-year budget in place. We froze tuition. Uh, we got our building projects underway. We got approval for the settlement. We did things that matter. That $500 million out-of-court settlement with several hundred Nassar survivors was a major accomplishment, although Mr. Engler is still battling with the liability insurance company to beef up its contribution to that hefty price tag. I think they're grudgingly yielding some ground, but not nearly enough. Well, Tim joins us now live in our studio. Did Mr. Engler ever come close to resigning? There were calls for that to happen. But... Well, you know, there was such a cacophony of people calling for the resignation that I think for the uninitiated, they would say, this guy was going to fold. Mm -hmm. Well, if you know John Engler, he's not a folder. He'll hold him, and he was in for the long haul. So to answer your question, no, there was no way this guy was going to step down. And if he didn't really want the job, why did he take it? Yeah, good question. Uh, he, he said both he and Michelle, the former First Lady, talked about it, and they said, we don't wish to be here. But they also said the university was in crisis, and he personally concluded that he thought he had what was needed to come in and clean up the mess. He thinks he's doing it. Some people don't agree, but he'll be here. We'll see if he gets the job done. We continue our special series on Spartan scandals one-on-one -on -one with interim MSU President John Engler. Tonight, the focus is on the culture at MSU, Engler's job performance, and more. And we're learning more today about one of the key accomplishments touted by Engler, the $500 million settlement with the survivors of Larry Nassar's abuse. As it turns out, that deal included language requiring that bills in the state legislature responding to the Nassar scandal either be changed or defeated. One of those bills would have extended the statute of limitations for victims of sexual assault to file lawsuits. The agreement required that bill be dropped or amended so that Larry Nassar survivors would only get a 90-day window to file. Well, interim MSU President John Engler had a big part in negotiating that agreement. Alexander Illich asked him about the public's unrest over what's being classified as the largest sexual abuse scandal in the history of sports and how he plans to tackle it in the months ahead. How do you allow for a cultural change if you don't get rid of the people in place that, that perhaps created it? I think well, the, B word, the key word is perhaps. Uh, the president's gone. She retired, uh, but more importantly, the doctor that committed the abuse is in prison for 175 years, and now the dean of the osteopathic college, which in my judgment didn't exercise the proper oversight, had poor performance. He's now gone and separated from the university forever. So, so those key people are important, and they're gone. But critics say Larry Nassar's life sentence, Luanna K. Simon's resignation, and the criminal investigation against former MSU Dean William Strample do not eradicate a cultural problem at Michigan State University. Lawsuits detail accounts from several women who say they told MSU trainers, coaches, and staff at MSU about Nassar's abuse over the course of two decades, and nothing was done. It was not just one man that allowed this to happen, but it was the enablers all around that didn't do anything when they were, one, told, or um, when they saw red flags. Larissa Boyce says she told MSU gymnastics coach Kathy Klagas in 1997. Your actions not only consumed my thoughts, but distracted me from moments I can never live again. Four years later in 2000, Tiffany Thomas Lopez claims she told MSU athletic trainers Leanna Hayden and Destiny Tichnor Hawk that same year. Christy Achenbach says she made her coach, Kelly Burt, aware of the abuse. This process has been horrific. In 2004, Kyle Stevens says she told then MSU clinical psychologist, Gary Stalick. Some of the survivors that, that I've talked to, they say the apology that Michigan State has given them isn't good enough. I, what, what can you do for them? I do not think that uh, if uh, there's any apology that could ever make up for the damage that was done to the women by Larry Nasser. It, it, this, I think we have to put ourselves in their shoes if we can. I think it's impossible to try to do that. But uh, you, you know, they were they were hurt. These were young girls, young women, and they were they trusted a doctor. For them, we hope. And pray that they can, you know, move on with their lives. The settlement's a part of that. We covered a lot of topics with President Angler. 
we did in, in my final report, which you'll see in a couple of days, we talk about Engler's political connections to Michigan State University and why some NASA survivors, as well as their parents, believe those relationships are getting in the way of a fair and impartial investigation. He was in some hot water when in, in an email he suggested that one of the survivors of Larry Nassar's abuse could be getting kickbacks from the legal team. Our Capitol correspondent Tim Skubik asked Engler why it took him more than a week to apologize. When the private email became public, there was MSU interim president John Engler hinting that one of the leaders of the survivors may have been part of a kickback scheme. The interim president, however, was in Texas when the story broke, as Mr. Engler was there with his spouse as they are building a new home. And Michelle Engler is also coping with two parents who are very sick. I was in Texas, and I frankly wasn't talking to the office or paying much attention. So you had no contact with the office at all for eight days? No, I, not, not on something like that. Since Mr. Engler was out of touch, he did not know that two MSU trustees were calling on him to resign. The survivors also wanted him fired, and others wondered why Mr. Engler was not saying anything or apologizing for his alleged inflammatory remarks. Nobody called you up and said there's a fire burning back on the Red Cedars. We've had a Red Cedar lined with fires and camps uh, since I've been here. Does Mr. Engler agree with the analysis that he should have apologized sooner? Well, you know, those are the kinds of analysis that are done by people who aren't maybe in the middle of something. Remember, we're talking about a private email. Well, yes, but it was public that you had said it. It wasn't private anymore. Well, it was private all the way along. You know, I think that the point is uh, when I'm finally with Michelle after not being with her for a while, I'm not going to spend time you know, responding to anybody. Mr. Engler says when he got back to campus, he was told there was, quote, a real emergency and you better deal with it. And then he apologized. I was wrong and I apologized. I met with the board, I dealt with it, and we moved on. Our series of reports following our one-on-one -on -one interview with MSU Interim President John Engler comes to a close tonight as we examine the former governor's political connections to his alma mater. Alexander Illich asked him if those connections had anything to do with his decision to come on board while investigations into the university are underway. Why did you agree to do this? I mean, if you think about what you walked into, my question to you would be, does it have anything to do with the political connections that you perhaps have with several people at the university, uh, Bill Schuette, because they're all key players involved in the investigations, does it have anything to do with kind of your relationships with them politically? Well, that's a really poor question for a couple of reasons, because Schuette wasn't involved when I came here. Bill Forsyth was a former prosecutor from King County. He wasn't involved. But that's not entirely true. My department in this investigation will find out who knew what and when. On January 27th of this year, the Attorney General's office announced that retired Kent County Prosecutor William Forsyth will lead an investigation into systematic issues with sexual misconduct at MSU. A few days later... All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The MSU Board of Trustees approved John Engler's appointment as interim president. Engler and Schuette have quite a bit of history. Records show Engler as governor appointed Schuette as his agricultural department director in the 90s. Engler also donated to Schuette's campaign for governor. So did William Forsyth. Some also say Engler was appointed in an effort to appease some of MSU's big donors like Peter Secchia, who also contributed to Schuette's campaign. Engler currently sits on the board as director of the Grand Rapids-based Universal Forest Products to which Sekia is a shareholder. You had trustees trying to be operational here in effect. But Engler maintains his argument that he took the job simply because he wanted to make things right. There was a, it was a mess, and so I came because I cared and I thought I could help. However, some feel uneasy about Engler's connections to Schuette. The victims of Larry Nassar deserve to know who knew what and when. Including Lisa Lorenz, mother of Nassar survivor Kaylee Lorenz. I think what Sudi did during the Nassar investigation was everything that I could have hoped it would be and more. That's where the viral was shot. That was so amazing and so great. Now I feel the opposite. She's now concerned that investigators aren't as motivated to get to the bottom of who knew what and when at the university. There's too much politics involved. The original investigation that was done by MSU police certainly 
didn't interview the people I would have liked to have seen interviewed. Um, you know, witnesses that were named that were never asked questions. Lauren says she wants to see a truly independent investigation, saying anything less would be a disservice to the survivors and MSU community.